What's up, everybody? You already know who it is. It's Drip God Daryl, and I'm back at you guys with another. Bang! So, today is Sunday, so you already know what time it is. It is Star Bench Cut, episode 3. So, in today's video, I have three players that play the same position, and we will choose who we want to start, who we want to bench, and who we want to cut. Now, those three players are Bam Adebayo, Jaron Jackson Jr., and John Collins. Now, all of these players play the power forward position, but they all can play center of need be. But y'all already know how I like to do these star bench cut videos. I like to separate them into three different categories. Now, those categories are stats, because as we know, when it comes to stats, that's probably the most important thing on determining how good a player is. Number two will be the eye test, because Without the eye test, we don't really know how each player really gets their money. And what I mean by get their money is how each player scores, how each player defends, things like that. You need the eye test to really get a full idea of how a player plays. And third, context, because let's keep it real, basketball is a team sport. So we do have to add context into things such as the team that the player plays on, especially when it comes to a power forward, because most of their offense is usually through their point guard. So with all that being said, first and foremost, let's get to the stats section. So to start off, let's start off with Bam Adebayo. So Bam Adebayo, he is 24 years old. And in this year, in the 2021-22 season, he did average 19.1 points, 10.1 rebounds, and 3.4 assists. His field goal percentage was 55.7%. He didn't shoot any threes, so his three-point percentage is 0%. And his free throw percentage is 75.3%, and his efficient field goal percentage is 55.7%. Next up, let's take a look at Jaron Jackson Jr. So Jaron Jackson Jr., he is 22 years old. So he is younger than... Um, Bam out of bio and his stats for the 2021-2022 season was 16.3 points per game, 5.8 rebounds per game, and 1.1 assists per game. Now he did shoot 41.5% from the field. He shot 31.9% from three, and his free throw percentage was 82.3%. His effective field goal percentage was 47.7%. Last but not least, our third player, John Collins. Now, he is also 24 years old. So, um, Jaron Jackson Jr. is the oldest, I mean, the youngest out of the bunch. But let's get to John Collins' stats. Now, in the 2021-22 season, he did average 16.2 points per game, 7.8 rebounds per game, and 1.8 assists per game. His field goal percentage was 52.6%. He shot 36.4% from the three, and he shot 79.3% from the free throw. His effective field goal percentage was 57.6. Now, y'all should be able to see all the stats right down there. And just before I give my, my opinion on the stats, I want y'all to get down in the comments below and tell me who y'all feel like won the stats category. Now, me personally, just looking at these stats, hmm, this is kind of tough. But I think Bam out of bio definitely won the stats. I think second was John Collins, and then third was Jaron Jackson Jr. Now we will take a look at the eye test so we can see how these players actually play. All right, so we have switched over. And before we even get started, I do want to shout out my man, Maximilian711, shout out to him. And if you wanna watch the full video, just go check out his channel, subscribe to his channel, and hey, while you at it, subscribe to the fucking channel. Y'all already know, shameless plug, but hey, I'm putting out quality NBA content, so subscribe to the motherfucking channel. But hey, we will only watch three minutes of this video because, like I said before, if you want to watch the full video, check out Maximilian711. But with all that being said, let's get to it. Now, 
before I do get started, these are only, you know, highlights from the 2021-22 season, just so you know. So, I just want to give y'all that context, but let's get it. It was amazing how they flipped the script. They were really struggling. And Trey Young had been pretty. Bam! That is gorgeous. Whoa. From Lowry, a alley. reverse jam for Bam. He's green with the board. Takes it coast to coast and rejected by Bam out of bio. Good defense, good block. Five minutes to play here in the first quarter. Adebayo shakes. A little shimmy shake. Woo! Bam short. Bam on the offensive board. Bam banks it in and draws the foul. Adebayo at the foul. Damn. A streak to Bam That's Adebayo and a say. chance for a three-point play. Adebayo loves it. Another plus. It's a miss by Justin Robinson. Another heat defensive rebound. Bam, down the runway, got fouled and scored. Bam out of bio with a chance at a three-point oh, one. How does he keep his balance? Unbelievable. Boone holes are out on the floor a little bit. Rebound to George Hill. Stolen by Good Butler. Beat. Bam with the slam. Got to go help him. Saw him play so well last year, Brissette. That's what I'm saying. You got to go. Oh, he's having an 0 for 9. He has missed all seven of his shots. Look out. Bam on a breakaway. Tyler Hero has put up nine shots in eight minutes of action. Upstairs. Let me pause. This man is an alley-oop machine, bro. Like, bro, you throw the ball anywhere near the basket, he's going to catch it. And to be honest, I feel like almost all of these players are like that. But let's continue. That's number four on Joe Harris. Butler drives in, finds the open man. Times to Bam, great catch. Circling, slamming. Bro, just this. This game, you're not ready for. Still a 22 point lead. Alabama having his way. That's a tough match up for Nice baby. More aggressive on the perimeter. They're one of the best teams defending the three-point line because of that. Four o'clock, Hero in a little bit of a hurry. Finding Bam. Oh, yes. Bottom of hands deflection. Bam. Get the chin. Nice pass. A lot of nice pass. Big patient on the block. Out of Iowa. It's so just. Ford's got 12 points in the period. Make it fortune. He's assisted on both makes for the Clippers out of bio down the lane. The floater is good. A couple of assists as well. But this first quarter has belonged to Miami. Out of bio, right in. Out of bio. I'm going to tell you what. Bear his. All right. So that is three minutes. And my thoughts on Bam out of bio. Me personally, I feel like. One of the things that's the most underrated when it comes to his game is just his picks. I feel like out of the three players that we do have on this video today, I feel like he definitely sets the best picks. And another underrated thing in his game, besides his midi, because he does have a pretty decent mid-range, is just the way he chooses his spots. And what I mean by that is that it seems like he always finds the right place to be to get an easy dunk or an easy layup when, you know, the defense is slacking on him or when the defense gets lost or broken down, he always seems to be in the right spot to contribute to the team. Now, he also is a great passer. This year, it didn't really show that much because um, Kyle Lowry is here, and I feel like them having Kyle Lowry made – Bam out of bio be less integrated in the offense as a pass, a passing gun big man, but he definitely still has that in his game, so I do feel like I do need to note that. But next up, let's take a look at Jaron Jackson Jr. 
All right, shout out to Maximilian711, and let's get it. The first season with Memphis is Steven Adams, but he seems like he is already was up and down last year with his three-point shot, maybe a little bit more so than he was. Walter only played four games, and Steven Adams won't miss the ball. Nice scary. Nice pullback. Nice pullback. Saving to Kyle Anderson. Jarrett for three. Bingo! Jackson passed on the three. Bradley trying to check him. Oh, what a finish, Mike. Jackson again, but he's not shy right now. Jackson for three. I'm going to just stop it right here. One thing I just noticed off top is just my man's my man's ability to hit that three. Now, it's a lot of, you know, power forwards who are implementing a three-point shot in their game. But me personally, the thing I like is that he really doesn't have much hesitation when it comes to shooting the three-point shot. A lot of big men, they tend to have hesitations when it comes to shooting the three. But... He definitely doesn't have that hesitation. And for him to only be 22 years old, it's crazy that he already has that implemented in his game. Usually a lot of these big men, they don't implement a three-point shot into their game until they're like 28 to 30. But let's continue. Dead to look at Miami cover him up. Bain to miss. Oh. 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 Jackson, Williams, Jones, and Conchar. Jarrett, another three. Good again. Need some friends. Jarrett, an open three. Bango. Balls up. Tap one. Morant with a chance to tie or win. They kick it out. Three. Jackson. Oh. That might have been the game winner right there. Let's continue. 5.7 seconds. No hesitation. No fucking hesitation at all, bro. I like that. I like that a lot. It's to play. And a one-point Memphis lead on a big three. Late. Jarrett for three. Bingo. With four or more assists this season. Jarrett. Metsu takes a dive, Jaren up under. Tyus sets up the screen with Jaren. Pick and pop for three. Bingo! It's cut off. Jackson Jr. Ooh. gets to the bucket Boy. with a... Hey, hold up. I like that. Y'all gotta think about this. This man just beat a guard off the dribble. Fred Van Vliet, he beat that man off the dribble. That's crazy. Is that not crazy to y'all? To me, that's kind of crazy, though. That's definitely kind of crazy, but let's continue. Thunderous slam. He's a promising young player. About this even on Sunday, right? You get some stops, get out and run, and transition. Able to break it, and Jackson Jr. And it was look for the grist. Here's Jaron for three. And down the well. This seven assists tonight. Jaron, another three. <laughs> Oh, give me the obscure one. I don't need all the big ones. I'm good with obscure. Derek Mason. Jackson regained possession. Puts it down. From Brooks against Caleb Martin. Robinson defending the taller. Jaron Jackson who drives hard and scores easy. What is Mavericks team? Jaron going to go at Cleveland this time and lay it in. Good draw. Good draw. Jaron against Finney Smith. Hits the hook. Heel was their propensity to turn it, to turn it over. Mm -hmm. Jaron mm -hmm. drives in there. He's you have to. Damn, that's on AD, man. That's tough. If y'all don't know I'm a Lakers fan, that's tough. That's tough. Look at this picture. I know a lot of y'all Memphis fans probably just cropped this picture out right here. God damn. <laughs> God damn, man. But, all right. I'm just about to give my thoughts on Jaron Jackson Jr. So, Definitely, I like, I like how you know, what what would the word be? I like how enthusiastic he is about shooting the three, but at the same time, I feel like that's a detriment. Now, as I was telling y'all in this video, 
he likes to shoot the three. And most of these highlights, all I seen him doing was picking and popping, shooting the three. And that's definitely a great thing to have in your game. But at the same time, you are 6'11", 6'10". I do want to see you actually in that paint also, you know, banging down low. And that's something I didn't really see with these highlights. Also, when we just look at his field goal percentage, if we include that, it seems like he's not that efficient just yet. So, that would be my knock against Jaron Jackson Jr. Although he can hit that three, and although he is a pretty solid pick and pop power forward, he doesn't really have much of an inside game. We seen with Bam Adebayo, he had the little shimmy. And most of his offense is coming from, you know, the inside. He's taking advantage of his 6'9", 6'10", height, Bam Adebayo is. But at the same time, you look at Jaron Jackson, and it's completely opposite. You see him shooting more threes. And like I said, that ain't a knock to him because that allows him to have, you know, a a well-versed offense but at the same time you do i do want to see you also taking advantage of your height you are 6 10 6 11 so i do want to see that but with all that being said let's switch over to our final player john collins The timeout. Cooper on the lob. Oh, oh my God. Oh my Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to start this off. We starting this off pausing it. Oh my God, bro. Oh my. Bro, this man jumped on Jaron Allen's. Well, Jared Allen's fucking head, bro. What the? What the fuck? Bro. Hold up. I might have to, I gotta rewind. I'm sorry, y'all. I gotta rewind. That's that's wild. That's wild. Oh shit. Love the timeout. Look at this, Cooper bro. on the line. Bro. The top to John Collins. Oh. What a play. Holy smokes. Oh. Did John Collins get up in oh, the my air? God. Look at this pass, John. Look at this pass. John goes up. Even the Cavalier bench. And look like he couldn't believe it. Shoulders. Grizzlies had three triples in the first half. They have two here in the third quarter. And John Collins. Come out and be started his game. Ah, oh, there it is. Trade to John. I mean, it's like they haven't missed a bing. <laughs> Doc never did it. Jam for Collins. A little bit enough of just playing against each other. Pick and roll. Extra feed. To contest that shot, use the rim to his advantage. Rose, then the visitor this evening, says it all. Collins down the lane, double clutches. That was a circus shot. <laughs> Collins down the pipe. Nice, nice. nice feed. With nine to go, very comfortable. Oh, five. John Collins flexing for everybody and one. running with Trey. Bounce to her to lob to Collins. Bro, bro, hold up, hold up. Nah, nah, nah. Some of this shit should be illegal. This man is dunking on people's head. His his nut sacks is on the back of some of these men's heads, bro. This should be illegal, bro. I gotta rewind. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to show him any different treatment than the other ones, but some of these highlights just wild, bro. Some of these highlights is just fucking wild, bro. Hold on, y'all. I'm sorry, y'all, man. What the fuck? What the fuck, bro? What the fuck? <laughs> Flexing for everybody and one. Running with Trey. Bounce to her to lob to Collins. Whoa. Trailed by as many as 16 in the first half. Here's a lob to Collins for the throw. Here's Young from deep. No good. Oh, Collins soaring through the air with the putback stop. The lob to Collins on the inbounds. Trey Young is the inbounder throwing the lob to John Collins. <laughs> 
The lob to Collins from the logo. And the rebound. Lose picked up. Reddish behind the back. It's going to be Collins. That's, that's just a hustle play. That's just oh, a great nice hustle pass. play by Reddish. Didn't, Reddish. Didn't, didn't give that. up on the play. I did not notice that. Two point game. Great pass. Collins on the lob. Right. And then Monty feels the same way. Frank, yeah, away, then he makes his move. Oh, well, first of all, I think the defense knows as Collin gets away for it, Donovan. What type of defense was that, Donovan Mitchell? I know you're the smaller guy, but what type of defense was that, bro? But, hey, my thoughts on, my thoughts on John Collins. So, when it comes to the eye test, I feel like he definitely won the eye test easily just off how fucking insane he is athletically and all of these players are athletic you know freaks but shit like dude he putting his nuts in people's faces man literally <laughs> literally but hey nah like to be on a more serious note I definitely feel like when it comes to the eye test John Collins wins just because he's so well rounded. When we seen, when we seen um Jaron Jackson, we mostly seen pick and pops. When we seen Bam out of bio, it was mostly in the inside. With John Collins, we got a good amount of both. So I definitely feel like he won the eye test. But Let's get to the context aspect of this video. All right, so let's get to the context. First off, let's start with Bam Adebayo. Now, although Bam plays for probably the most successful team out of the bunch, I definitely feel like he has the worst point guard out of the bunch. And I definitely feel like that's one of the reasons we've seen his numbers slightly drop this year. And I'm not saying Cal Lowry is bad because he's not bad, but he's not better than John Morant. He's not better than um, Trey Young. So I definitely feel like that's a point to play. Uh, some more context. Bam Adebayo, you could say that his his game is limited. Unlike John Collins and um, Jaron Jackson Jr., he doesn't shoot threes. So. That's some more context that we should add to this equation. That that Bam out of bio, he's not shooting threes. He's not as offensively gifted as the other two players. Well, that might not be the right word, but he hasn't developed his offense as much as the other two players. So we do have to add that context into this also. So let's move on to Jaron Jackson Jr. Now, Jaron Jackson Jr. He, he's definitely a good player. But at the same time, one thing that's been biting him in his ass a lot is that he's been injured. Another thing is that although he's a great defender, he tends to foul a lot. This is something that's been going on and on and on in his career also. Because, let's keep it real. Me personally, I feel like if Jaron Jackson Jr. didn't foul all the time, he would be right there with Bam Adebayo. And when it comes to defense, me personally, I got them in this order. Bam Adebayo is the best defender. Second would be um, Jaron Jackson Jr. And third would be John Collins. But, yeah, because he always fouling, that, that, you know, that kind of lowers his value because he's not always on the court. He's, in, he's either injured or he's always fouling. Some more context that I do want to add is that he is the youngest, so we do have to include that. He's only 22 years old. The other two players um, are 24, so he still has more room to grow compared to the other two players, so we do have to add that context. Last but not least, he's still playing with a very young team. Out of all the teams, I feel like they have the youngest team in the NBA, so there's still room for all of the players to grow. It's not like it's that many veterans on that team. So, hey, I do feel like 
there is context that needs to be added when it comes to Jaron Jackson Jr. Context when it comes to John Collins. No, John Collins, hmm, he has, he definitely has the best passing point guard on his team. As we've seen in them highlights, a lot of his offense came from Trey Young breaking down the defense in a pick and roll. So you can say that a lot of his offense isn't really that hard to, you know, produce because you got Trey Young on your team. Trey Young is easily breaking down the defense easily. He's blowing by people. He's pulling up on people. That's a lot of, you know, that's a lot of pressure on the defense. So you do have to add that context. So more context is that he is 24 years old. And to be honest, me personally, I feel like his all his um, game has kind of stagnated a little bit at the age of 24. I feel like his stats might be slightly lower than they were last year. So we do have to add that context. Also, does he really contribute to winning when it comes to his team? You have another young power four center style player in a Kongu um, playing also. He's better defensively than you and he's like a rookie or in his sophomore year. So you gotta put that into the equation also. So with all that context, before I tell y'all who I will star bench and cut, y'all tell me in the comments down below who you will star bench and cut. No. I will start Bam Adebayo. Now, that's a super hot take. I know his offense is limited, but I will start him just because of how great he is defensively. And we done seen how important he is to a team that does really have championship aspirations that did actually make it to the finals before in the Miami Heat. He's definitely, you know, he definitely can be a superstar player. He just needs to hone in more on his offense, be more aggressive at times, things like that. Second, I would bench Jaron Jackson Jr. Now, this is once again because of defense. I feel like Jaron Jackson Jr. is a better defensive player than, um, than John Collins. Um, he can shoot the three, similar to John Collins. And he is pretty athletic. He's not on the level of John Collins when it comes to athleticism, but he, he's still pretty athletic. And he's only 22 years old. He has room to grow. And unfortunately for all the Atlanta fans, I know y'all might be mad in the comments, I would cut John Collins. Now, this isn't a knock to John Collins. He is a great player. But I definitely feel like um, Bam Adebayo and um, Jaron Jackson Jr. have more potential than him. And they also are just better defensively than he is, in my opinion. But with all that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like the fucking video. Comment on the fucking video. Subscribe to the fucking channel. And I'm out. Peace.